Oh, there we go. Good morning. Hey, guys, talking with the sound off. Sorry about that. So good morning. It's Caleb with the Stain and Seal Show. It is Saturday morning doing it again. Uh, second weekend in a row. Looks like this is going to be fun. So give me a thumbs up if you guys had a great week this week, first of all. And second of all, tell me where you're from and what your name is. If you're on Facebook, uh, remember, they've got privacy settings now and we cannot see who you are on Facebook. So you got to throw your name up there so we know who you are and where you're from. So, man, we had a huge week this week over at Stain and Seal Experts. Did a lot of uh, out of town training, did a lot of traveling, been all over the country this week and got a lot of stuff done here locally in, in Middle Tennessee. So it was a good week and uh, get some lights on in here. It was a good week and I and, uh, just want to see how you guys did. So introduction. I've got notes. I'm getting better as I get older and I'm starting to take notes. So I've got some notes here. wanted to talk about the heat. I don't think it was as hot this week as it was last week. We will see. We will see. Uh, got Dan Wheeler just signing on. Dan Wheeler from the Fence Industry Podcast, one of our great friends and customers uh, and partners in business. So good morning, Dan. Glad you got your skid of stain. Hey, guys. Uh, if you were in Kima, Texas with us this week, raise your hand and let us know. We had a huge training event in Kima. Um, that is a suburb south of uh, Houston, Texas. We were right on the water. Kima is a really cool little town. And we did a training for Wash Mart. Any of you guys ever seen Marco Romando? Um, he is down in Texas. They make some of the coolest um, pressure washers in the business. They've got a really great manufacturing shop there and they make I think they specialize in industrial uh, power washers. So when we cleaned a fence with their machine, it was um, it was way too much machine for what most wood guys use. But we used a ball valve and backed the pressure down and were able to use it. Uh, but just some incredible folks down there got a huge operation selling, I guess, one of the biggest power washer suppliers. And, uh, you know, they sell all the parts, all the chemicals, all the machines, everything. And now they carry our stain, but one of the biggest in the country and, and really actually some really great folks. So really enjoyed that. We had a lot of people at the event um, and a lot of them were converts. They were coming from other stain brands and we're happy to to uh, to check out what we were doing and, and we're pleasantly surprised. So what we did at that event was we stained a fence. I think it was a 50 foot long privacy fence and we cleaned about a 50 foot long privacy fence. But the thing was, this was real world scenario. So we had on one end, we had a brick house fence tied into a brick house, a white brick house on one side. On the other end, it was tied into a white hardy board house. Um, had a set of gates, there were pavers and everything up underneath the gates. We had a swimming pool, probably 25, 30 feet away from uh, the fence. And on the other side of the fence, um, I guess five feet away, we had a brand new white concrete pad. And beside of that, up to the fence, there was probably a four or five foot gap. I could reach and touch the fence and the building. There was a big industrial metal steel building there. And sitting right on that concrete pad I told you about was a brand new Winnebago travel trailer, a white one. Um, and so it was about as real world as it gets. And we were right on the coast. So we were dealing with some pretty heavy winds. And um, so real world training, how do we deal with it? And actually, the job went off without a hitch. Uh, we, we basically masked each end of the house. A lot of stain companies really want to push the fact that you can wet concrete down, you can wet brick down and you can uh, do those kind of things. Somebody said something about the hats. Look at those said you can you know you can do a lot of those tips and tricks but we just masked it we took five minutes and we masked the house where the brick was we masked the hardy board everything else like the concrete and things we kept it wet and we used a graco a brand new graco 395 uh, which our backup machines at our company are 390s but this was a 395 the 395 has the uh, the it wasn't a digital readout but it has like an electronic box on the side and you can really dial your pressure in a lot better and I loved that machine because I was, you know, the machine came with a 515 tip or a 517 tip, low pressure, the blue tip. And there was no extension, uh, which, you know, kind of a pain in the neck. But um, we were able to turn this machine all the way down. I took some of Kenny Dugan's advice and I ran the machine right between the prime and just where it was coming, uh, just where it was coming up. Um, 
just right into the pressure zone and there was zero overspray. You know, you could see a little bit of a cloud, but it was such a fine mist and there was so, so little overspray that the, the white camper that was downwind from where we were working and the white metal building that was five feet away from where we were working, got no overspray on it. So I was really, really, really impressed. The only problem with the 517 tip was there was, it was too low of volume. So if I had to do it again, I would bump it up to that 1223 with an extension and run that super low pressure. And I think that will eliminate most of you guys overspray problems because it was just, for me, when I, when I used to stain, on a daily basis, man, overspray was a major issue, but these new pieces of equipment are really able to put out the volume and really control it and dial the overspray back. So um, revolutionary in my eyes. So that was that was really pretty cool. Um, hey, somebody's bringing me my AirPods. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. So so this new equipment was super cool. It was really nice to use brand new equipment and, and to show people, you know, the benefits and advantages of using that 395 machine, which I, I do endorse. They don't endorse me if they want to call me, but uh, they don't endorse us. But I do endorse that machine because it's a good piece of equipment. It's got three filters, rebuildable pump, and you get rep support with that, which you don't get rep support with other types of equipment. And even some specialized stain equipment, if you break down, nobody's got parts for it. And if you've got a good airless sprayer, you can get parts everywhere. So uh, that was a really good takeaway from that. And then on the other side of the fence, um, we we cleaned. So so we cleaned the back side of the fence. We used eco cleaner and wood cleaner. This fence was about 20, 25 years old. There was, um, I believe, I, I want to think that it was cedar, if memory serves me right. And man, it was nasty. It had lichen growing all over it. It was black and green and it had moss and mold. You name it, it was on there. And we used eco cleaner, wood cleaner on it, pre-wet the fence. Uh, the reason we pre-wet it, and in my opinion, pre-wetting uh, can keep. So think of it. Think of your fence or your wood like this book here. And everything you're trying to clean is on the first page, right? The first one or two pages. But cleaning chemicals, um, anything wet tends to go all the way through the wood. But if we wet it, pre-wet it, we can fill all of this porosity, all of this hollow uh, wood structure up with water. And then when we put our chemical on, it can't go into it. So it's going to stay and it's going to work on the top level of the wood. So when we pre-wet, we're just attempting to keep our chemical on the top layer of the wood. And we'll use a little bit less chemical, actually. So let that dwell. And then, uh, and then we used Marco's huge, huge... Uh, 5,000 watt, what was it? Five, it was 5,000 PSI, five uh, gallon, five and a half gallon a minute machine. And it was just like, it was crazy. But we stuck a ball valve on there and we were able to dial it back to about 800 PSI. And uh, we actually did a test where we used the full pressure with the white 40 degree tip and let a couple experienced power washers wash the fence. And it kind of looked like crap. When we dialed that same tip back to, um, whatever it was, it was really low pressure. You could hold your hand under it, but it was still pressure. Uh, we were able to clean the fence without fuzzing it, without, um, without damaging the wood at all, and really do actually a lot better job with the low pressure than the high pressure. So a lot of people think, you know, um, we could just throw bleach on there. We can just, uh, we can just blast it away. Um, but you know, really letting the chemical do the work for you allows you to use much less pressure uh, to remove what you're trying to remove. And we found another fence that someone had actually pressure washed and they really used a lot of pressure. They gouged the fence up in a lot of places, but the fence looked clean. And so a lot of you guys know that uh, our eco cleaner is a, a sodium percarbonate base. And when that stuff hits organic growth, it foams up like scrubbing bubbles. And when, so we did a test just to see, Hey, how good a job does a fence does it do when we just pressure wash a fence with just straight water, which you got to do that sometime around waterways in certain areas, but we thought we would test it. So we sprayed the fence down with eco cleaner and the whole entire thing foamed up and bubbled up, even though it looked like clean wood. So, uh, you know, what did that tell us that told us that the whole fence, even though it looked clean, there was still a lot of organic growth there. So, um, and from what I've heard other people say, when we just, when we spray, when we, when we, power wash without actually using something to kill organic growth. We're actually blowing the organic growth all over the place. And it's kind of like just fertilizing the whole area. And it usually can come back worse. 
So anyways, did a great job. Um, I was really amazed at um, how much amazement there was from people who've been in the industry for many, many years and had never seen uh, the chemicals that we use or wood brighteners and had never seen uh, stains that work like ours do. So that was really cool to see some people's eyes open. You know, we live in this world every day and uh, you just don't, You can, I guess you take it for granted. You get used to it. And, uh, but it's really cool to see the wow effect on some people. So I'm going to take a minute to say hello to everybody. Um, Dan Wheeler again. Thank you, sir. He said he got his skid of stain in. That's awesome. Uh, Chris Olson over in Madison, Wisconsin, having a great season of staining. That's great. Wisconsin's a great staining state. Uh, good morning, Jack Johnson in Ocala, Florida. Jack, man, let's hang out sometime. Ocala is a great, great place to be. Lots of cows down there and lots of horses. Mr. Sam Bacon, uh, been in the industry a long time and uh, on the lumber side of the industry. And now uh, the, they've got a family business where they're doing uh, some staining. Actually, Sam's son, Kobe, came down with us and interned for about a month on his own dime uh, and really invested in himself and did a great job. I wanted to keep him. And he worked with us for a month, I guess the month of April. And uh, he did a fantastic job. He came down all the way from Michigan. And uh, Michigan's another great standing state. And he took all that he could learn, took it home with him. And he's got a great company up there now called Wavewood Services. Uh, maybe it'll be staining to experts of Michigan one day. You never know. Chuck checking in from Chicago. Good morning, Chuck. James, he said, I want one of those hats. You might already have one on the way. You never know. We've sent out um, we sent out a couple hundred hats already to uh, some of our great customers. James, love how you can spray concrete off if it hits the wood. You're so good. Yeah, so that's cool. If um, our stain goes into the wood, if it gets wet, it's usually okay. Roger Betancourt, hey Caleb, watching as always. Looking forward to seeing you on Joe's channel. Everybody, hit a thumbs up and a like for Caleb. Thank you, Roger. Hey, yeah, I'm gonna be on Joe Everest's channel. I don't know, at 10 or 10.30 this morning. I never can remember what time it is, but I will be there uh, with Joe. We'll be talking about the TCAM event that's coming up. So we got another training class coming up in July in North Carolina, which I will um, I'll go ahead and throw up that right there for a second so you guys can see it. Boom. Write that down if you want to go. Come on and go. We'll see you in Ju uh, July the 20th and 21st. Back to the comments. So James asked me, do I use a little soap in the mix as surfactant? I've been doing it and it seems to work well. Never have used a surfactant. Um, usually with our wood cleaner, the sodium metasilicate based stuff, I see foaming and bubbles coming off when we're rinsing and uh, usually have to rinse pretty well to get that off. And so I've never really, I've never really seen a need for soap. Um, I know Kenny Dugan says surfactant can help break the surface tension and all that. Um, I'm, I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm not so sure because I just don't see, um, a different outcome when we, when we use a surfactant, uh, I'm not saying it's wrong, just saying seems to be working good for us without doing it, uh, for the type of projects that we do here in Nashville. It is Vinny McKinney from Texas. He was down with us in Houston. It was great to see Vinny. Um, he has been all over. He's been to Nashville. He's been right here in our office. He's been, uh, I think, maybe to some other events, too. We, we love seeing Vinny. He is, he's always, always there. We got Bam Bam listening from the creek. So Bam is operations manager here, vice president of operations here at Stain and Seal Experts. And um, he runs the plan. He makes sure that you've got the stain that you need on the shelves. So when you order it, it gets to you. Bam in his previous life was a pressure washing and staining professional. And so Bam goes with me and he helps teach these classes. And usually when we go to these big power wash events, when there's 20 or 30 different instructors there, uh, Bam always gets voted number one instructor. Uh, I don't know if it's because he's so handsome uh, or because he's a good instructor. I'm not sure, but uh, that seems to be the consensus. He always gets voted best instructor. So glad to have him with us. Um, Truth Seeker had our best week so far of the year. Well, he's in Tennessee. It's been hot. It's been dry. So I could see that. Been able to get some work done. 
Yes, sir. Great place to live. I can take you on an airboat ride. I love riding on airboats. The last time I was on an airboat, it had a 454 on it. It was awesome. James said he'll be on one of the podcasts one day. Just come on and let's go next week. Let's do it. Come on next weekend. So if you want to be on the podcast, let's go. So who else is watching? Because we got less comments than we got people watching. So somebody comment, say where you're from, and we're going to start giving hats away to people that don't already have them. Uh, if you make a comment here, just let me know you made a comment and we'll make sure you got one on the way. All right. So let's talk about, let's go back and talk about the TCAM event for a minute, because I think that's important. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it, but just like the event we did for Washmart, washmart.com for Marco uh, down in Houston. Uh, in fact, that's one of the biggest online retailers of uh, power wash supplies. So check those guys out. But just like we did the event down there, um, we're doing the same thing for TCAM up in um, over in North Carolina. And so this thing's going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina. TCAM is one of our distributors over there on the East Coast. Uh, they hold a lot of our stain and cleaning chemicals in stock, as well as power washers, power washing equipment, degreasers, every kind of chemical you can think of. Um, so um, make sure you come out because the lineup for this event is huge. I think there's going to be 20 different guys, uh, from different companies, Matt Warner, Joe Everest, um, myself, Bam Bam will be there. Ron Musgraves, Patrick Clark. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Um, I can't remember all their names. There's so many, but you're going to be able to go there for free. This is a free event and you get to go hang out with a ton of people that, have been doing this a long time and they're from multiple industries. So I love going to events like this because there are some industries that are ahead of other industries. And so if I can speak with somebody in maybe in the heating and cooling, uh, electrical and plumbing type industry, I can learn things from them that they've been doing for 30 years that we've still not caught up to. If I want to talk about and learn about subscription services. I should probably go talk to somebody who does that. Maybe a pest control company, a guy who's had a pest control company for 20 years, probably get you ahead of the game. If you want to become, you know, if you want to start a stain company, go talk to somebody who's been staying in a long time or a fence company. Or if you want to, if you want to scale your business, if you're sitting at $10,000 a month and you want to go to $10,000 a week uh, or $10,000 a day, go talk to somebody who did that a long time ago and is doing it even bigger now. So, um, that's the reason we go to these events. So if you can't make it, uh, just come anyways. And it's uh, July 20th and 21st, TCAM free technical training event. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Probably going to be one of the biggest ones in the country uh, because we've had so much time to promote this one. Um, so, so there's that. If you can come, raise your hand and let us know. And you can sign up right there at the link. I think it's nationalcleaningexpo.com for that. Awesome. So let's see. Donnie Garrett or Danny Garrettson, I'm sorry, at Defense in O California. Good to see you today. And uh, comment north of Houston and potential fence entrepreneur. Caleb has that micro like voice we all tune into here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. I like micro. I wish we could get micro on the podcast. I always thought uh, talking to micro about staining would be just the best thing because he did dirty jobs for so long and it just kind of fits with his brand and uh, reached out to him a few times and never had any luck. But if you know micro, maybe give him our number, have him give us a shout and come on the podcast. Cause what I would, what I would like Mike to talk about is the trades and talk about how sometimes doing dirty jobs pay the most money. You know, I think that's just a fact of life. So nobody better to talk about it than Mr. Mike Rowe. Let me get on down my list here and see what else next. So what we did this week, we um, we did a couple big black four rail fences this week. We did a couple cleaning jobs and uh, let's see here, did a couple privacy fences and we are on one big project over in Arrington, Tennessee which is a big, humongous, there's a pergola. Uh, there's two pergolas. There's um, some pool fencing around a pool. There's about 800 feet of privacy fence around the backyard. And then there's a bunch of cedar shakes and corbels all the way around the house up on the second and third story. Beautiful, beautiful project, really high end restoration. And we love those jobs. 
And um, that's what we've been working on this week. So I think Monday that one will be finished up. And looks like, pull up the schedule here and see, but it looks like we're probably going to be doing a lot of staining next week. Um, yeah, I see brown every day on our calendar. Brown is um, means staining jobs. So looks like all next week. And we're probably going to pull pull some of our guys out of the shop. So we got a lot of guys in the shop. And sometimes it gets old being in the shop all the time. So to get caught up for next week while we have hot, sunny weather, we're going to um, put some guys in the – Put some guys in the field, get some work done. So um, some of you have heard and some of you have not heard, July 1st, next Friday, we're having an open house. Um, and there's going to be food. It's going to start about 12 o'clock, maybe 1 o'clock this Friday, July 1st, celebrating Independence Day, July 4th. We do this every year. Burgers, barbecue, cornhole, we play washers all the games um, in the morning, we'll do a team training for, for us in house. And then about midday, all the families come out for everybody. And we just have as big of a great time as we can. So if you're in middle Tennessee, um, come and see us, uh, all our customers. We love it when you guys come down and hang out with us. So we're starting to get quite a few people to come by the shop on a daily basis and everybody's invited. And uh, if we get enough people to come, I'd like to everybody to RSVP or our, whatever the, saying is let us know if you're coming and uh, we'll make sure and make an extra burger for you and maybe we can do some kind of presentation i'm not sure it seemed like that might make sense mr truth seekers heading out for his nine-year-old's birthday party he'll catch the replay glad you're doing that family first man um roger Bettencourt says has a have a great day mr stain man kenny dugan from where are you from lewisville texas is that right kenny you're in lewisville can't remember, but um, Kenny, I took your advice on running the pump down between the prime setting, just above the prime setting on a 395. Beautiful. It worked perfectly. Uh, so can't recommend that highly enough. Uh, the overspray was between zero and one. It was really good. It was really good. And, and it really, having done that with so many obstacles around, it really boosted my confidence. And so I took that same confidence that I learned. And so one of my homeowners asked me a question uh, about our guys were up on a lift and they were doing that same setup because I told my guys about it and they said, yeah, we've been doing that forever. Don't you know anything? And so I felt sort of silly, but they, the homeowner, this house, it's a couple million dollar house and we're spraying these cedar shakes up top and back brushing them, back brushing everything in and making sure we get any excess material off so it doesn't drip down this white hardy board house. And um, he asked about the overspray and I said, you know, and I said, hey, it's no no problem. My guys told him the same thing. Uh, Foreman, I think Joey was over there and uh, he did the same thing, told him the same. But when they called me, I having that firsthand experience, I was able to say, hey, low pressure, they're running super low pressure, they're running low pressure tips overspray I'm not concerned about at all if we do get overspray on we'll clean it off but I'm not concerned about it so that was a good feeling uh, to be able to, to do that so if you've never used that low pressure setup it's worth the money it really is um, it's just a little bit more money to get that commercial grade machine that has that low setting on it and uh, and it's worth the money to get those blue tips because they cost um, and they cost the same price as a regular tip but you got to go get it so do that. So Mr. Stainman's from Corinth, Texas. And uh, he says, I need to start carrying a 1223 tip on my keychain. I just need to keep the 1223 on the end of the gun, probably, it sounds like. Um, but man, I really think technology's uh, in improving in our favor. You know, stain guys used to, they didn't make anything that really worked for us. Uh, nothing specifically. And now we've got a lot of options that really, really do a good job. Kenny, what tip do you use for staining um, spindles, things like that on a deck? What do you use for that? Uh, what do you use for deck floors? Give us a couple of your tip recommendations, if you don't mind. Would love to hear about that. Next week in Nashville, looks like we've got better weather, too. So I was talking about that a few minutes ago. But... Um, so we're all in the 90s, but it looks like starting Monday, we're going to be down in the mid 80s. And uh, 
It's going to get up in the low 90s by the end of the week, but that's way better than the 100, uh, 100 degrees that it's been um, the last few weeks. So I don't, I don't know what it is, but it is really dry here in Middle Tennessee. It is drier than I remember it normally being in June. It seems more like uh, July, late July right now. The grass is starting to get brown. You know, when the dog runs across the front yard, dust flies up in the air. And uh, that is not normal. So uh, that's the way it goes. So Kenny's using a 210 FFLP um, tip for spindles. So that's good advice. So that's going to be barely putting out any product at all. And, you know, and he's putting a 1223 on decks and he's doing fences with a 1225. He's an experimenter. He had to experiment to figure this stuff out. So you guys should do the same thing. One of the guys that I, I know who's been painting for about 30 years he was doing some stain jobs for us and i came out to a job of his a couple of years ago and he was using a two 440 titans and he was running those low pressure tips and um, i thought he was so silly running his machine so low it was so quiet I, I was i remember being amazed at how quiet the 440 was running at such low pressure and they were just using these little tiny tips and they were staying in fence and it took them a little bit longer than um, it would take us to do but they didn't have any overspray on the ground. They had very minimal masking. They had just, you know, a, a six foot wide, six foot tall piece of masking plastic up next to the house, uh, right where the fence touched the house. And that was it. And they had two guys out there going at it with those guns, super low pressure. And uh, so it just goes to show uh, we can learn from other industries. Christian Foster just landed our second staining job. Another deck, this time double the square footage of the last deck. And it looks to me like this is the man from flipping Arkansas. Am I right about that, Mr. Christian? If so, congratulations. I'm looking at the photo and I believe it is. I believe that it is. So that's awesome. Staining jobs are everywhere. It, it blows my mind when I travel about how many fences and decks need to be stained and sealed. They're great. Even if you go to Dallas, one of the most um, competitive stain markets in the country, there's more fences there unstained than there are stained. So there's so much opportunity out there. And the thing is, is the more people that start doing this, the more people start having this done. So obviously the world is ran by salesmen, right? So we need somebody to go knock on doors and sell something. And when you do, um, that gets the ball, the, the ball rolling for the economy, right? So the more salesmen we get out there, the more hustlers, the more hungry guys we got going, knocking on doors and saying, hey, your fence is gray. You know this. It's going to warp, crack, and twist. It's going to give you problems. And you're going to have to replace it because it might rot uh, sooner than you would like. But we can stop all this. We can postpone this. We can make this more beautiful for just a small amount of money for a very reasonable price. And uh, the more we do that, the more people start getting it done. The more people start noticing it being done, the more people start wanting it done. And that will drive demand. That will make more people uh, get on the internet and search fence staining near me. And they're going to be needing somebody to do it. So the more guys we can get in this industry, the better and the faster we will grow. So some more tip recommendations from Kenny Dugan is I run FFLP tips for my solids. 616 for the most part but I probably have 20 tips to choose from. That's cool, Timmy, Timmy, Kenny. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Uh, Christian says, yep, from Flippin' Arkansas. And his reference came from a Chamber of Commerce reference. So that's interesting. Chamber of Commerce, networking. Just, just talking about right there, he would not have had that reference if he was not a salesman and he was networking, making friends with people. And so there you go, Chamber of Commerce reference. That's awesome, man. I think everybody should be knocking on doors, talking to people, uh, wearing your staining shirt everywhere you go. Because believe it or not, these shirts, I hated them at first. They say expert professional wood care, stain and seal right on the front. I thought, well, that logo is too big. It looks unprofessional. And what I realized is when I wear this shirt out or see other people wearing it, people ask, they go, hey, are you a wood care professional? Yes. They start asking us questions about fencing, about decking. They ask us questions about how to refinish furniture. And so these shirts with this big, huge logo on the front, 
they just work. They just work. TSA the other day at the airport is asking me questions about wood stuff just for seeing this shirt. It's kind of like the one second uh, commercial that everybody sees and they notice it. So if you don't have one of these shirts, you got to get one. Let us know. We'll help you out with that. Go back to my list and see what else I want to cover. I was hoping some folks would come in here and ask some questions. I know we've got a good audience and I feel sort of silly talking to a box without anybody to talk to. So if you got some questions, please let me know. And um, I want to share with you a lesson I think I learned about business this week or a realization that is so obvious, but I'm going to say it out loud because it just kind of clicked in my head. The future is right now. So a lot of times in business, you think I'm going to get to that. I'm going to do this later in time. I'm going to you know, put this in place. I'm going to write this reference manual. I'm going to write this SOP later. I'm going to, um, you know, make systems. I'm going to make a better invoice. I'm going to make a better contract. I'm going to make a better greeting email for my customers. I'm going to record a better voicemail on my phone. Um, I'm going to automate my Facebook messenger chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and what happens is we're gonna and we never do and so the realization is that right now every single day is the super bowl for us we're not training for that far off date when we go to the super bowl like a team is or for the playoffs or for the state championship we are literally right now in the now doing the thing and so i think you know we do get downtime in the winter and I always said that's a great time to get your axe out and sharpen it, get your swords out, make arrows, fill your quivers with arrows, do all the things that are going to break down on you in the in the wintertime, get that ready for battle. But in the summertime, you need to still be getting after it. And so always be improving. Get this stuff done. It's very important. Your family literally depends on it. And I wanted to say another word about the economy. You know, I hear a lot of people talking about the economy is going to crash. I, I don't I don't think so. I think the economy has been trying to collapse for the last two or three years and it's not done it yet. And uh, back in the old days, you know, rich people make money when the economy goes up and they also make money when when it goes down and they probably make more money when it goes down. I don't know how many people I've talked to that said, oh, yeah, I make way more money when the economy goes down. They fill their pockets with cash. When the economy goes down, everything goes on sale. And they start buying it all up at bargain basement prices. So back in the old days, you know, we didn't have all this digital stuff. We didn't have technology. We didn't have as many people working and doing things. Um, and so in the old days, they could crash the stock market and it would take everything with it. But a lot of people that I'm talking to disagree. We don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to keep working. You're going to keep working. You're going to keep buying the same amount of groceries and toilet paper and gasoline and things that you bought last year probably more next year than you bought this year so why is the how's the economy going to crash everybody's still going to be eating everybody's still going to be working and uh, so i think it's all of our responsibility duty and obligation to just keep working keep working and work harder this thing's not going anywhere we've got a great a great future ahead of us i do believe and uh we're not slowing down over here so one of the biggest mistakes that i have heard of in any business is that when things get bad, when money gets tight, um, when people listen to the news and they say, oh, it's going to be a big economy crash. Uh, and by the way, the news, they have uh, accurately um, they have accurately um, predicted. Um, what is it like a hundred of the last two recessions, right? They're always predicting a recession. They're always predicting these things and uh, very seldom do they get it right. Uh, so remember that. But um, most companies retract when things get bad or when things slow down. But it's June. You know, school got out. Things slow down. This happens every year. It's happened every year for 100 years. People go on vacation. They're not interested in getting their house washed or their fence stained as much because, hey, the kids just got out of school. We want to go to grandma's house. Number two, the, the world's open again. 
man, look on your Facebook, look on your social media. Everybody's in Spain. They're in France. They're in Italy. They're in Portugal right now. World travel is back open. And if you've not been to an airport lately, it's incredibly busy. We went to the Nashville airport. I always go in to the biggest first parking garage, the closest one. I pay a stupid, ridiculous price of like 31 bucks a day to park my truck there, but I don't care. I get right to the front door. I go right in and my wife always says you got to get to the airport two hours early. I like to get to the airport uh, five minutes early and I've got a deal worked out with the airlines. If I'm not there when they when they're ready to go, just to go ahead and go without me. So we got that figured out. But all the parking garages were full. All the parking lots were full. There was no parking at the airport. We had to get a shuttle and park like five miles away. It took us one hour to get from the airplane when we got back home to the truck. One hour from the airplane to the truck. And then we sat in line for probably 20 minutes to get out to pay at the gate. So more people are traveling right now than ever before. So if you're seeing a slowdown in your business right now, it's because people are traveling. It's because COVID is over. People are moving about the country. And also normally around the 4th of July, guess what happens? You get about a week or two weeks slowdown because 4th of July is a big travel weekend. Everybody's going to see grandma's house. Uh, so don't get discouraged. If this is your first or second year in business and you're freaking out because it's uh, it's slowing down a little bit, this is normal. Uh, this is actually a time for you to catch your breath uh, and get a few things patched up and ready to go for the second half of summer. July, towards the end of July, should be huge. We're also going to have another slowdown. Um, we're going to have another slowdown right when school goes back because everybody's focused on school. Most of the people you work for that have a fence in their backyard, they also have children and those children go back to school. So that's the way it goes. Get used to it. It's nothing to be alarmed about. Stay busy, stay uh, advertising, stay marketing. But back to the original start of this conversation was when things slow down, usually people pull back on their marketing. They pull back on their advertising. They go, oh, we better save our marketing dollars. And time and time again, when there is a recession, the companies who increase their marketing efforts always came out on top. And they come out on top, usually at a multiplier of 10 or a multiplier of 20, as compared to the other people who retract. When you retract, um, that's not good. You know, there's a saying, they say, if you're not growing, you're dying for a reason. So keep that in mind. That's that's an important thing. So uh, what can we do to market ourselves in a bad economy? If you don't have the money to do it, Facebook Lives are for free. Facebook uh, posts are for free. LinkedIn posts are for free. Um, TikTok's free. Instagram's free. All this stuff is free. We have more free advertising than ever before. When I was coming up in the fence business, we had to do, um, we had to do a uh, yellow page ad. The yellow page guy came to the office. He would sell us an ad. It was nine hundred bucks a month or a thousand bucks a month for an ad this big. People had to literally open a book up and when the book came out, you know, you would look at it. And if your ad wasn't just right or in the right place, you'd get so upset. But it was incredibly expensive just to get somebody to open a book and, and search for uh, whatever you did. And some a lot of you guys remember that we have so many advantages now. Plus, the number one thing you can do that's always free, that can't be shut down, that can't be uh, censored, that can't be shadow banned is calling people call people. People do business with people, not that they trust, that they know. You've always heard they're going to do business with who they trust. Do you, do you trust the car salesman that you know up the road that you bought the last 10 cars from? Well, you may not trust him, but you know the guy and you're willing to work with him. So I'm not saying be dishonest, but I'm saying it's not about having the greatest relationship in the world. It's about being known to be omnipresent in your market. So for instance, um, if you're trying to get into touch and do business fence standing jobs uh, with folks, call the fence guys, call the guys who were there doing the fences on a regular basis, text message them, send them emails, send them Facebook messages. Say, hey man, um, a great introduction is, hey Brett at Rio Grande Fence, appreciate you watching. Hey Brett, you guys build fences, we stain fences. We should be friends, man, it just makes sense. Um, 
get together, give out business cards, exchange them. And um, if you really want to get the business of the fence contractor, start sending them text messages of fences that you've stained or decks you've stained or sidewalks you've washed or fences you've built or houses you've painted, whatever your trade is, uh, you know, beautiful wiring jobs. If you do electrical work and you wire it in a panel and it's beautiful and it's beautiful electrical wiring work, you know, a lot of electricians do sloppy work, but if you do really great work, send whoever you're trying to work for photos of that. Not just one guy, send 50 guys that picture say, Hey, Hey Fred, um, you know, I know you've got a huge HVAC company and you use subcontractors. Here's some duck work I just put in over here on the west side of Nashville, man. I just wanted to share this with you. If you ever need anything from us, let us know. and We'll be glad to come do duck work for your company. And if you start doing that same thing in your business, it works in any industry. It doesn't matter what it is. You can, you can really do a great job of getting people to come and send business to you by word of mouth and never have to pay for it. And all you have to do is make some friends, make some relationships. That's the way it used to be. There used to not be Facebook Live. So um, just remember that it is definitely worth your time uh, to make those relationships and you can do it very easily. Just be known in your marketplace, call people and tell them what you do. Wear your shirt everywhere you go. You know, look at me. I'm wearing a Stan shirt everywhere I go because I want people to know what I do. I want people to call me. I want realtors to call me. I want fence guys to call me. I want plumbers to know, hey, these people stain fences. I want the lady that picks up that that owns the dog poop scoop company. I want her to know, hey, your you know your fence looks kind of bad. I know a guy who can fix it. I want to make friends with everybody, so be sure and do that. So Kenny Dugan, congratulations. He says I've already surpassed last year's numbers and getting close to passing 2020's numbers. That's awesome, Kenny. I, I think everybody's revenue numbers are going up. There's a lot of things driving that. Um, you know. Things are more expensive now. Oil prices have gone up. Fuel prices have gone up. Groceries have gone up. Toilet paper's gone up. Um, but we're the same way. Our numbers have surpassed last year's numbers. And I think I think um, it's going to continue to do that. We're going to both by volume of work, but also by average job cost. Our average job cost is up this year as well. And I've heard some people say that, um, um, and, and I want you guys to listen to this and, and think about who you're advertising to. Um, I've heard some people say that, hey, we're not getting as many jobs in the lower end neighborhoods right now. Um, people with lower household incomes. But we've been getting a lot of high net worth individual or high household value uh, or high home value. Um, individuals have been paying us to do bigger jobs. What does that mean? Well, I think that, you know, if you look at the household, average household income in, in most wherever people live, just Google search it in your market. Maybe you have four counties around you. And there's going to be some neighborhoods that, um, that have a $48,000 a year household um, income average, which is very common. I mean, it's all over Tennessee. People average $40,000, $50,000 a year for household income. And with fuel prices, with grocery prices, with all the prices of everything up where they are right now, we're in a bit of inflation. Those people aren't spending as much money. They just don't have it right now to spend. But the guy who makes um, a quarter million bucks a year or $500,000 a year and he lives in a $2 million house, it's nothing to him. You know, when the price, when the gas price goes up, he doesn't even notice it. So maybe if you are struggling right now to get business, maybe you're working in the wrong neighborhoods. Time to take a look at some of the, the neighborhoods where you've got a, got a higher home value, but a higher, really what we want to focus on is the disposable income. So home value does not always mean disposable income because how many of you been in a neighborhood with a bunch of broke people with, with mansions? So we want to look at that household income. Where is the household income higher and um, where are the house is pretty nice, you know, because those people got money in their pocket and they're willing to spend it. So Brett out of Brush Creek, Tennessee, I work with Rio Grande Fence Company out of Nashville. We just install fence, but I really enjoy watching your videos and learning more trades with the industry. Brett, I pretty much live in Brush Creek. I'm sitting in Brush Creek right now. I'm actually an Alexandria address, but I am in Smith County, Tennessee, which is Brush Creek. I bet I could throw a rock. Uh, 
to your house. Why don't you come see us sometime? I was actually just talking to Derek the other day on LinkedIn. I saw him at uh, Finstech also. So I've been uh, been knowing Rio Grande for years. I remember when Mr. Leroy Smith was around, uh, the guy who started Rio. So really cool company. Too bad you guys don't do more wood fence. But if you do wood fence, I've been hitting Derek up. Hey, let us come stain them for you. You guys get a couple miles of fence. That's wood. We need to do it. And that fence at the Hermitage, if you work on that fence at the Hermitage, man, that thing needs to be stained. Come on, man. Help us out. Let's do it. That's exactly what you got to do, guys. You got to talk to people who do the work you want to do and make friends, man. I've been wanting to do that fence around the Hermitage, which is where Andrew Jackson's home is. It's a Western Red Steeder split rail. And every couple of years, they have to replace sections because the Western Red Cedar and the ground rots here in Tennessee because our soil acidity is high. And uh, I've been dying to, to do some standing on that fence for uh, since I was a kid, man. So um, you never know. Maybe my day will come. That is it. Who else has got questions? What's going on in your world? Who's got bad weather? Who's got good weather? Who's got some wins? Who's um, who's sold a big job? Who needs help closing a big job? Who's got a question? Let's hear about it. Let me get a drink of water. Y'all bring those in. I'm going to do a quick shout out to uh, some of our dealers, some of our retailers, because, uh, again, it's so important uh, to support the people who believe in us that bring in products for you to keep them on the shelf. So I don't want to sound like a commercial, but, you know, part of my job is to make sure that the people who support us um, get a little bit of love and also to make sure that the folks like you who need support and support us have the products you need close by. So all-star fence and supply over in Paris, Tennessee, we got premier fence, Mr. Walter Donnell over in uh, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, panhandle power washing supply, Trudy, she ships also. So anything you need from Trudy, she's famous voted best power wash supply store of 2021. We got Chattahoochee stain and seal, Mr. Kennedy down in Columbus, Georgia. We got Hercules fence and supply. Lake Charles, Louisiana. Those are some great folks. I think that's, uh, they've been around since 1955 or something like that. Been around forever. American Fence Staining, which is up in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Perimtech, uh, that's an online dealer out, do a lot of business on the West Coast. We got Texas Fence Supply Online. They're based out of Arlington, Texas. We got Lawrence Lumber in Houston. They also own Houston uh, Deck and Shade, biggest deck builder in the Houston market. And if you've ever been to Houston, you know it's huge. Really great Christian folks there. Um, I would trust my kids at their house alone. They're good people. And um, if you need stain in Houston, it is definitely worth the drive. They're just north of Houston and Cleveland, Texas. We've got Martin's Lumber. There's a lot of Martin's Lumber's locations in the heart of Houston. Uh, sort of a discount lumber store from what I've been told. They sell a lot of lumber. And I, when I say discount, I don't mean uh, cheap lumber. I mean great prices. A lot of volume. Those guys move a lot of volume there. Also, Universal Force Products. If you've got a store and one of your suppliers is Universal UFP, talk to Bernie. He'll bring our stain right in, put it right on your shelf today. Uh, you got Hudson Fence over in Lubbock, Texas. Those guys actually swapped from a uh, you know from another stain brand to us. The number one reason they swapped was because they were in. They had a, a commercial location with multiple units. You know, they had neighbors and they do a lot of pre-staining. And um, the, the stain they were using had such a bad odor and so much chemicals. Like a lot of these other stains have napathol, which is lighter fluid and things like that. And I mean, it was burning people's eyes, burning their nose. and Everything smelled like a chemical factory um, that they actually were. They had neighbors complain to the, you know, to the landlord about it. And it, and it came very close to causing them some major issues with their, with their, uh, with their, you know, their place they were renting. And uh, they swapped over to our stain. No more smell, no more mad neighbors. So that was a big win there. We got Heritage Fence up in Pennsylvania. Got Kasurik Distributors in the Northeast. They covered New York, Pennsylvania, um, Delaware, a big, a big area over there. You got the notorious Sean King, Mr. Fence. I call him notorious. I don't know why, but I just do. But up in Evansville, Indiana, they've got stain on the shelf. We got Ideal Fence, Kokomo, Indiana. Cool name. We got Joe Everest up at Ozark Fence and Supply. And he's got an online store. 
if you need stain, he's got it. He sells it for a great deal, and uh, he keeps a ton of stain and stock up in the up in the Springfield, Missouri market. Um, don't tell everybody else, but probably my favorite supplier is Empire Fence over in uh, Waverly, Nebraska. That's Matt Warner. He's like uh, sort of like a father to me, and uh, he takes really good care of his customers. So. Um, Matt Warner, thank you. you. Guys, go see Matt. Eastern Fence Supply over in Charlotte, North Carolina. Triangle Pressure Services in Raleigh, North Carolina. T. Kim uh, in Kernersville, North Carolina. We got Chesterfield Fence and more over in Richmond, Virginia. Reuben Borg Fence, Livermore, California. We got eight, uh, eight fence factory locations, which is down in the Southern California area, such as uh, LA. I don't know all the names of the towns over there. But around L.A., Southern California, uh, they have eight locations, really, really big fence supplier. And uh, they carry our stain under a different name. It's uh, it's um, Fence Factory private label stain that we make for those guys. Um, and I think uh, a lot of people actually go over there and buy Fence Factory stain knowing that it's the same stain that we make. So we also have Fence Armor. It covers all of Canada. Um, great folks over at Fence Armor. They sell our stuff. We sell their stuff because we believe in one another. And then over in Vancouver, we got the fence shop, uh, which is in Vancouver, BC. So for you West Coast Canadians, um, we got it over there, eh? Right? So, uh oh, Joe Everest gave me a 10 minute warning. Joe, ease up, man. I'm not finished. I think he, th he thinks I'm coming on his show or something and not going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to end the day with a funny story because I've been hearing this before and my heart is so flattered. So I'm going to tell it. Um, so multiple times it's come to my, um, come to my uh, attention that our company. So a lot of you guys know we own stain and seal experts. That's our service business, but we also own expert stain and seal expert professional wood care so we manufacture wood stains the best in the industry we manufacture wood cleaning products um, that really do a great job and we keep hearing that we don't manufacture anything it's the craziest thing a lot of you guys on the show here have seen uh, been to our place see our see our operation but um some some of these stain companies in Texas. So so what we're hearing is people are calling some other stain companies and saying, hey, what's the difference between your stain and expert stain and seal? And some of these folks are telling people that, oh, um, it's the same stain stain that we make. We just um, manufacture it for them and license it under uh, that name. So you might as well just buy our stain because it's the same. And um, I appreciate the flattery. Um, but it's not true. And um, feel kind of silly even having to say this, but man, we have a manufacturing facility here in Nashville. We build our stains from scratch. Uh, we've got a great team that makes the stain right here. We developed the stain ourselves. We built it in a stain or it was a half stain, half sheep shed. So story for us making stain was we just needed a better stain. So we just kept experimenting and we messed up some stuff along the way. But we figured it out and really did a good job getting us a good stain built. So um, we do we do make all of our products here. We do private label for other people. We are a real manufacturer here in Tennessee, and we do manufacture with all sourced American products. So, hey, guys in Texas, you other stain companies, you know who you are. Appreciate the flattery, but I don't think so, guys. All our stains made by us with our materials we get from our suppliers not from you guys so if you have called one of those other stain manufacturers and they told you that call them out on it next time and and uh ask them some questions and and uh, i think you'll figure out um you'll figure out maybe not so true so anyways guys I'm going on the Joe Ever show next, which I'm super excited about. We're going to talk about the TCAM event. If you need samples, check these out. Check out those beautiful sample kits. Finally got them. Things are slow. You know, things are slow. We, we've been taking our time to really get this stuff right. But we've got these beautiful four-ounce sample cans. They have instructions. They say sample on them so you don't have, an S, have to have an SDS sheet with you. If you get caught with one of these in your truck by some, you know, uh, DOT person or whatever, and 
All the instructions are on here, just like a full size stain can. There's no other samples that I have seen in the industry that look as good or are as informative or look as professional. You show up to a stained customer's home with one of these, they're going to know this is a premium product. Uh, they're going to be impressed with you. If you need these, we're making them. We're not as fast as, uh, you know, Sherwin Williams because we don't have a billion dollar factory to do this in. We have to do a lot of this stuff by hand the old fashioned way, but we will get them to you. And so if you need those, let us know if you need other tools to sell with, because I know it's important to go to stain jobs or to estimates and things like that and have brochures. We got a great brochure here that you can use. And these are actual color photos. So these are actual color photos, HD images of the stain. So I want to show you something. We spent a lot of time getting this brochure right because it's so important. So I want to show you how close the colors are. It's very difficult to do because uh, of the lighting up here and everything's backwards on the computer. But there's honey tone, almost perfect match. Let's take a look at cedar tone. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's see here. Let's try. Let's try Sequoia. Let's check this one out. Very close. Very close. Let's do, what is this? Walnut. As you can see, very close. Very close. So our brochures, we like to think, we like to, to think that these are the best brochures in the industry simply because we took a lot of time as you guys know to get these to where uh, they match so because the last thing we want is for you to tell your customer pick a color out of this brochure and when they get the finished product it's a different color as you know cedar pine new wood old wood redwood spruce Sometimes looks different. It all looks different, but these are the best in the industry for samples. If you need them, let us know. We've got 18 beautiful colors. We do have sample kits, brochures, whatever you need. Just email us at samples at stainandsoexperts.com. Check us out. Uh, the expertwoodcare.com website be up and running for you guys very soon. That's where you can find a list of all our dealers and all of our certified contractors. I appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a great day. And thank you so much for listening um, to me talk to a box for the last couple of you know hour or so but i appreciate it give me some feedback after this thing plays through because i'm going to read all the comments i'm going to re respond if you want me to keep doing this you let me know and i'll keep doing it you guys come see us july 1st happy independence day and uh roe versus wade congratulations america that's a good move for our country i believe so i uh, had to say that because i i do believe uh i am a strong uh, believer in life, man, because if you've ever lost a child, um, man, can't imagine doing that on purpose. Love you guys. Have a great day.